had, they wouldn't have understood, they didn't have the same kind of terms for illness and sickness that we would have today. Uh, they wouldn't have been understood in the same way. Um, does anybody know when anesthetics were first used? Not anest uh, yeah, anesthetics were first used in surgery. Morphine was started back in the Civil War times. Yeah, and it doesn't, which is true, and it doesn't become mainstream really until about 1880. So this is this is this is pre anesthesia. This is pre, you know, knowing about bacteria can give you infections and kill you, and and, and all kinds of things. So the medical knowledge here is quite different. What we have is this, is this narrator's description of what this guy looks like. Okay, so Roger Crusher, very, very, very pale, very thin, very corpse-like, cadaverous, I think is, is the word that, uh, that Poe uses. It's a great word. Um, what about, uh, some, any, what, what else about Roderick? Somebody else take him? I had him, but I said all the same stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, um, the eyes like liquid pool is really important. Okay, the, the eyes like liquid pools is really important, and you're going to understand why in a second. Uh, but what about Madeline? If, if Roderick looks bad, check out Madeline. What's, what's going on with Madeline? Somebody, somebody take her? No one took her? Okay. Can anybody remember how she's described? Don't, you don't need to be like word for word specific, but generally how is she described? Yeah, well, the, the first time she mentions, um, really, um, when she... They're, they're sitting there at uh, paragraph 14 and talking mm -hmm. about her, and she kind of passes, you know, by them, again, zombie-like, mm -hmm. wasting away, looking, you know, even uh, even worse than her brother, if that can be imagined. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she ha having this uh, this disease that, that's baffled all her physicians, which probably isn't really saying much, mm -hmm. um, all things considered, um, really uh, settled settled apathy gradually wasting away of the person. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for whatever reason, even though she's dying, she hasn't, you know, taken a bed. She's just kind of wandering around like a, you know, a corporeal wraith. Well, I think, right, I think wraith or ghost, I think, you know, a, a ghost is, is a real good way to kind of think about her. Wraith, ghost, kind of the same, it might be a distinction, I don't know. I think uh, it's the same term. Yeah. But, but we have, uh, if, if Roderick's a zombie, Madeline's like a ghost. Like she right. kind of, her descriptions are kind of uh, ethereal. She's kind of insubstantial, uh, at least until the end. We find out very different. Uh, but when she's first introduced, she's, so everything in this house is kind of, the people are kind of rotten. Not like because they're bad morally, although we might find that out in the case too. But bad because they're like physically deteriorated. Mentally, they're, they seem to be kind of unsound. And the walls are cracking. And there's mice and rats and fungus. And, Everything's kind of it, 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 everything is kind of funny. Uh, not funny, destroyed. I, I said funny because if you ever see Vincent Price's ver version of this, uh, there's this great movie version of it. But it's done in like the '60s. That's so everything very bright and colorful. Like if you ever seen the old Batman kind of cartoon, yeah, everything's yeah. really bright red and bright yellow and bright green. Well, they do they uh, they do the Usher house in that kind of set. So everything's like you know really really bold and nothing looks deteriorated. Uh, but. But uh, but we have these two kind of deteriorated characters. Okay, so deterioration. Remember motifs. What's a motif? I introduced it yesterday. Something that keeps happening over and over. Okay, over things, and over. ideas, uh, events, subjects that are repeated several times throughout a story. Okay, so the narrator focuses on the deterioration of both Roderick and Madeline. What's also deteriorated? Yeah, there's definitely definitely a connection between the state of the house and the mm -hmm. state of the people in the house. And of course, at the end, when you know Roger finally dies, his sister finally dies, mm -hmm. and the house just kind of. So we so we have this idea of deterioration. It becomes a motif. Decrepitude would be a word. It's a good word to use. Um, things are things are decrepit. Things are falling apart. Things are things are not um, very healthy. Or in a good state of repair. But what about the servants and the doctors? What kind of comments do we have on those? There's very few details, to be fair. But but who are the servants and the doctors? Well, the um, you know, paragraph uh, six, you know, mentions the the belay of stealthy step, um, as well as the the, the doctor um, of uh, his countenance, a mingled expression of low cunning and perplexity. So really, the the the, the words being used here are either unobtrusive, or shadowy, mm -hmm. or um, 
distrusting or these are shifty people the speaker's describing. They're like they're almost half there or either that. They're very distrusting and make them kind of edgy. What the phrase um, um, low cunning and perplexity. Think about what kind of person that would describe. If somebody had low cunning and they were perplexed, what kind of person comes to mind? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Someone else? Low cunning and if you were to, if someone was like, hey, you look low like you have low cunning and that you're perplexed, would you be like, that's a compliment? No, no what, like, what, like, what, like what, what what kind of person comes to mind? A lawyer. A lawyer? <laughs> a lawyer? That's just mean. Think about someone you don't particularly don't don't talk to uh, don't talk to Waldo, he's got low cunning and he's perplexed. Like like it sounds like kind of Kind of stupid, right? Like, like, like if you have low cunning, you're not very cunning. You're kind of simple, and then you're perplexed. This is the doctor, okay? So this this is this is the doctor. This is Roderick's best hope. Uh, if we have a, a valet with with stealthy step, what, what, what does stealthy step mean? What, what do you think? If you were describing that, yeah, it's like kind of quick little like person, like stealthy step, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't describe somebody who was like kind of upstanding and, you know, real straightforward as someone with stealthy step. Um, maybe if you're describing a runner, I don't know, but for a valet, someone who like brings your bags from room to room, uh, it's kind of a creepy, oh, sorry, yeah, oh, it's kind of a creepy description, oh, creepy descriptions. Remember motif, okay? Remember motif. Um, somebody who hasn't spoken up yet, I want to hear from as many people as possible, so even if you think you have some of the same information, what are some important details you have about these characters? It's great little phrases throughout the story. Nobody else? Okay. I had a question. Yeah. How um, the narrator spoke of his intimacy with uh, Roger. Well, it's a, it's that's a that's a real good question. <laughs> wow, dance around the world. That's pretty good, man. Or do they have a homosexual relationship? Let's just throw it on the table, okay? Intimacy. I think you can go both ways on that, okay? And one way is because uh, well, one way to answer your question is to say, well, the word intimacy is being used here in a different way. Intimate, which just just means familiar. The same way, remember how. Um, how uh, when we were reading uh, To His Coy Mistress, we talked about the, the meaning of the word mistress and how it changes over time. Okay. That's one answer to your question. Another answer to your question is, I think it's, I think you totally argue that, uh, that, that there is some sort of relationship between these two characters. Um, they seem to